Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and there is a soft spot in my heart for vector illustration apps. It's right by the part that loves cheesecake. Way back in the day when this YouTube channel was just a twinkle in my eye, I used to draw all of my comics in Adobe Illustrator. I know over the years, many of you have had the opportunity to see me just gush about vector isometric illustrations. I know, I know that can get a little cringy at times, but I love that stuff. I should do more of it. More isometric art, not cringy videos. Usually when I talk about vector apps here, I'm talking about the kind of apps that you pay for. Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer. Today, by popular request, I'm going to be taking a look at two free apps. One is the new 1.0 version of Inkscape, and the other one is an app for the iPad and the Mac called Vectornator. And with that said, let's do this. This is Inkscape. I'm currently using it on the Mac, but it's available on Windows or Linux, and it is open source, so like the title of this video says, it's totally free to use. So if this looks different than your version of Inkscape, that's because I've been playing around with the theming a little bit. If you go into preferences, you can turn on the dark theme. And I'm also using the symbol icons, the symbolic icons. I believe this is new to the 1.0 version. I know that the old version when I last used it years ago felt really dated to me. It just didn't feel like a modern app. Now it does. I think it's more the icons than the dark mode that helps me out in that regard. But you're going to see a lot of interface stuff here. Along the top, you have things like new document and save and, and all that sort of thing. I bet I could hide that if I wanted to because I'm not going to be using these things quite so much. Some of them are useful, like the group and things like that. Uh, that second layer of icons that we see there, those are tool specific. Uh, you see a lot of apps going this route lately. Um, now that I'm on the move tool or the select tool, whatever they want to call it, it's giving me options for that. If I go down to the second tool, which is my edit paths or my node tool, it's going to give me a different set of options down here. So all of my tools are along the left hand side. So if I would just want to grab this and draw a shape, I can go ahead and do that. One thing that I think is interesting is that it, it has your colors along the bottom. So I could come in here and find different color variations. I'm going to play with that a little bit more in a minute, but I thought that was pretty neat. So since I am on the square shape tool all on the top, I have the options to actually define the width and the height and even the units that I'm using for this particular shape. I'm going to go ahead and grab the node tool though, and I'm just going to grab one of these corners because that's going to allow me to change my shape. But it also brings up some other options. For example, I can turn this into a rounded corner, very similar to Adobe Illustrator. But it also changes some of my options up here. Along the right-hand side, actually, let me open something up. What happens if you go into the properties of anything? It's going to open up some stuff on the right-hand side. So I'll right-click on this object, and I'll go down here to Object Properties, and that's going to bring up this like Object Properties dialog. And it, you could do a lot of different things in here. For example, if I go to here to fill and stroke, it's going to pop open my, my fill and stroke options here. So I can add a stroke right now. It's undefined, but I can go with a solid color. I could change it to blue. You can't see that because it's too small. So let's go over to stroke style and let's make this six. I'll hit enter and there we go. Now we can actually see the stroke around it. So this basically has all of the tools that you expect any kind of vector app to have. I haven't done a deep dive into every single thing that it does, but I get the general idea that most of the things you expect from a vector program, this is gonna be able to do. There are a couple other cool features. For example, I really dug this like 3D drawing thing. When I draw a box, and let me zoom into that box so I can actually come in here and edit these shapes. I can grab any of these quarters and I can just pull in or pull down on them and resize this box. Now, one thing that I have noticed about this application is it does not run well at all on the Mac. Even just doing simple things, it's really laggy and it's really slow. And I think that's one of the main reasons I've never been a, a huge fan of Inkscape. I did play with it on Windows. In fact, when I was doing some of my initial drawing and illustration in here and just generally fiddling around, I was doing it on the Samsung Galaxy Book and it wasn't nearly as slow. But one of the things that I absolutely loved about it when I started playing with it was this three-dimensional tool because what it allowed me to do is quickly mock up some 3D shapes. So if I wanted to do some quick perspective work, just to get the sense of scale and where I wanted things to go in my illustration, 
th this kind of tool helped. So I'm not gonna go over every tool, but it has everything you would expect. You have your normal pen tool, you have some text tools, you have like a, a freestyle vector drawing type tool, paint bucket tool, all sorts of stuff in here, and a lot of options to modify any kind of shapes that you lay down. Quick cut! Question for you. I have courses on Affinity Designer and Adobe Illustrator and a bunch of Procreate courses out there, but I don't on either of these two apps. Is that something that you guys would be interested in? If so, let me know down below in the comments. On to Vectornator. All right, on to Vectornator. It has been around for a couple years and it started life as an iPad app and recently has been ported over to the Mac. And it reminds me a lot of Affinity Designer. So if you've tried Affinity Designer on the iPad and thought, holy monkeys, this is complicated. This app might be a little bit more your speed. It's simple and it's streamlined and it's really usable. So what we have here is our gallery page. Most of these are just images that were already here in the app. This is an old card game that I was working on a couple years ago that never really went anywhere. The reason I decided to look at this on the iPad as compared to the Mac is because it's just so much faster. I can zoom in and out when I'm pinching and zooming. Sorry if I zoomed too fast. Um, but this isn't, I don't know if I would call this necessarily a complicated file, but there's a lot of shapes, there's a lot of stuff going on, and this handles it incredibly well. On the Mac, when I booted up a similar file, it was quite a bit slower and it was kind of laggy for me. Uh, in fact, in general, when I was just selecting options and things like that, it just felt like it was a step behind, whereas on the iPad, it feels really fast. So let's take a look at this interface. We're gonna start in the upper left-hand corner. If we press that little X button, this is gonna allow us to go back to the gallery. We also have export options, some of our settings where we can come in here and play with a lot of these things. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And then on the left-hand side over here, what we have are all our tools. So exam for example, I have my arrow tool on now. This is kind of our, our white arrow tool or our node tool that we might find in other vector apps. We have a cut tool, we have our normal pen tool. So if I wanna just jump in here and just start laying down some shapes, I could do that pretty easily. I'm gonna go up here to the top and go ahead and just delete that. And I have a pencil tool and I have a brush tool and it's basically everything that you would expect from any standard you know, vector app that you would find. So these are just our basic tools, our type tool, our move tool, zoom tool, all that stuff. It's interesting that there is a zoom tool here because you know I think it's so much easier to pinch and zoom than it is to grab a magnifying glass. I really do like pinching and zooming in on vector art because you know it gets so detailed and uh, you can really see it up close. It is pretty cool. So let's jump on over to the upper right hand corner where we have some more options over here. And basically what these are, are all of our settings. So when we're in these tools, if we wanna bring up the style, it's really easy to do that. So if we lay down a shape, let me just grab a, a square here. Okay, a circle, that'll work. And if I wanna change the color, this is where I can do it. I can come in here and change it to pretty much anything that I want. And it's gonna remember your colors under the color bar and just some nice quality of life features that are simple, but when they're not there, you, you start to notice it. Uh, we also have our range, so if we want to align things or break shapes away from other shapes, actually that's not in here, but if we want to change the layer order and that sort of thing, that's there. Next up we have paths. This is where we can subtract elements and add elements together. Uh, and then over here we have our layers. And right now this is probably all grouped up, yeah. But every time I draw a shape, it creates a layer. This is something, I guess you could do this in Adobe Illustrator, but you have to break it out to see it. But I've seen a lot of these vector apps doing this sort of thing where every single time you draw a shape, let me get back on a shape tool, it's going to create a brand new layer for me over there in my layer palette on the right hand side. This is something that a lot of interface design tools more than illustration tools are, are really, really focusing on this, this kind of layers and looking at Vectornator's site, that's something that's important to them. In fact, they're working on some real time collaboration tools to go with this app as well. So it really looks like they're not just aiming at the illustration market here, but they're also paying attention to graphic designers, interface designers, UI designers. And then we'll take a look at the last tab, which are our templates. So we can kind of come in here and say, okay, I want the iOS template or I want this. So it has a lot of these templates already built in. So like I said, this is a great illustration tool. You can draw a lot of things with it, but they're also thinking about layout designers as well. I don't know what their business model is right now. This is completely free. They're not charging for anything. I don't know what they will charge for down the road. They've raised $5 million in funding, which means they need to make that money back at some point in time. But right now we've got this nice, beautiful, free 
vector app that's available on the Mac and on iOS, or at least iPad OS. Have you had the opportunity to try any of these tools? What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.